Hey everyone, good afternoon and welcome to the Longleaf Hospice Volunteer Annual Training for Fall of 2023. Thank you for all being flexible and doing this online if you were not able to get to her um, our one uh, in-person training. Uh, this is on HIPAA and documentation. I am Loy Turner. So um, okay, let's get started. The um, HIPAA is the first thing we're going to talk about. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, commonly called HIPAA, protects the confidentiality and security of healthcare information. HIPAA creates and protects individual privacy rights for protected health information and governs the use and disclosures of that information. Everybody is very familiar. We all, every time we go to the doctor, we sign the HIPAA forms. And um, so this is all fairly familiar to you, I know. On this slide, what I'm gonna want you to do, and you can just email me back this information. You're gonna watch the first video, HIPAA Training 101, what is HIPAA compliance? You just need to watch that video. And then the second video is spot the HIPAA violation. I want you to list three HIPAA violations that you see in the video. And again, you can send all of this back in one email. And the next thing I want you to do is come up with two different patient involved scenarios where there is or could be a HIPAA violation and how it might be corrected or avoided. On to documentation. Um, everybody knows that you have, we have to document all of our volunteer time, whether it's coming into the office to help with administrative work or going out to patients' homes. So this one's going to be more around the patient's visits, um, but does kind of can kind of um, overflow into our administrative volunteers as well, but not as um, involved, obviously. So you're going to want to document each patient visit. If visit, let's say if a visit has started, like you've left your house or your starting point, Document if you were unable to make the assignment or refuse or family refuses your visit, please make sure to document that as well. Sorry, that's a lot of words in there. Um, so what you're going to want to do when I mean with the if the patient, I mean, if the visit doesn't take place, let's say you leave your house and you get a flat tire. So you're having to deal with that. I still want you to document um, that time because you've still traveled some ways um, and you can just turn that note in saying that you started the visit or and left and that time you had traveled um, but then you can and call me um, and then we'll go from there if that makes sense if it doesn't let me know i can clarify that a little bit more um, if a family or if you get let's say you get to a house or a facility and you are refused the visit has refused let's say you get to a family's home and they're like oh i'm just not feeling really good today i for, i'm sorry i forgot to call you um you know, you say, oh, that's okay, thank you so much for letting me know. And then you're still gonna document that because you actually did make a visit. Um, it wasn't your regular planned visit, but we're still gonna document all of that and what happened. Um, you may get to a facility and you see a patient and the patient isn't feeling good that day and similar things. Um, you are, you've already traveled some t distance and you have spoken to the patient or someone at the facility, so you have made a visit, so to speak, we still need to document all of that and what happened. Um, only one patient's name and date of only one visit should be on the note. Example, if you see multiple patients in a facility, they each have their own individual note. Do not include the name of any other patient or resident in your note. Uh, for example, if you are visiting a patient in a facility and they have a roommate, you don't wanna use let's say the roommate's name is Barbara, you don't want to use the name, you don't want to refer to Barbara in your note, but you can refer to the roommate if you have um, interaction with her while you're making your visit. If you do make a visit, strike through with one line only, an initial, and then change any errors. Whiteout is not permitted, nor is scribbling, sorry, there's a spelling error there, over the word or words is not permitted as well strike through with one line, initial, and then change any errors. If needed, you can get a clean note and start over. Documentation should record the facts and just provide the facts, not your opinion. At a minimum, you're gonna answer the following questions. Was the patient comfortable? If not, what did you do about it? For example, let's say you're in the room with a patient and it's a little chilly and you notice that the patient is kind of showing signs of being cold. You might say, are you cold? Can I get you a blanket? And then if they say yes, and you get a blanket, um, 
you can document that you did this. Um, how did the patient respond to this intervention? You could say the patient um, said thank you, or you check, you know, once you asked the patient if that helped and they said yes, you can document that as well. Um, did you achieve the goal of the visit? So what is the goal? Um, this is what we're, we're talking about, the plan of care. And I've put a, um, a little screenshot over here of what I, my computer looks like. So this is what we're, when I'm looking at a plan of care um, for y'all, what I put into the system. And a lot of times um, I've, I'm trying to get these sent out to y'all as well. Um, but it may be that you are, a lot of times it's just visiting for companionship and active listening. Um, sometimes it's really for the caregiver. It may be to go grocery shopping or go to the ba um, bank or return library books. Maybe you are there to do laundry or do some meal preparation. It might be that you in, took part in a pinning ceremony. Um, those are kind of our goals. These are what, when I say goals, this is what we're looking at. And so you want to note, if I was there for companionship, yes, this goal was achieved. Um, volunteer notes should be turned in within 48 hours of the visit. That's kind of our goal. Um, I know sometimes that's not always possible, but we do appreciate those visits getting in as soon as they can so we can get them into our computer system. If you interacted with a team member during the visit at all, that should be also documented. Let me know once you go through this, if you have any questions um, about any of these things. But really what we're trying to do is paint a picture with words about the visit. And these are just some things, energy level, communication, movement, incontinence, food, orientation, breathing, appearance. These are kind of areas and words to think about um, when we're documenting. We're not looking for our opinion in the notes. We're just putting the facts. Um, and let me know if there's any questions about this as well. Obviously with incontinence, I want to make sure you're aware that I, we, we know we don't do any hands-on um, involvement with the patients, but let's say they soil themselves while you were there and you have to contact the office. Um, that's where that comes into play right there. Um, food, did they, um, did you feed them lunch or prepare breakfast for them? Did they eat much of it? That kind of thing. Again, let me know if you have any questions about any of this and I'm happy to go for this at our next meeting. A little volunteer note review. Make sure you put um, the date, the patient name, your name, time, including travel and description of the visit. Um, do make sure you're getting the date right and the time right, um, just so I can make sure that I'm getting it in accurately into the system. Um, on the volunteer visit review, make sure you call or text to confirm the visit the day before. Uh, make sure that you find out when the caregiver or whoever is in charge is due back if they are leaving the premises. Sometimes they're just out in the yard mowing grass um, or doing some work in another part of the house. But if they are leaving, you want to make sure that you establish that um, when they're coming back time, just kind of to help establish boundaries for you. Um, and y'all have got that end time set. If there are any emergencies during the visit, call the office at 770-939-9179. This number is also on the back of your badge, so it's always important to wear your badge um, when you're visiting a patient. Give them your name, the patient's name, and what the situation is when you call the office. Then you're going to contact the caregiver to let them know what is going on and that you have contacted the office to make sure the nurse and team is aware. Um, and you'll also obviously also want to contact me and let me know what has happened if I'm not the person who answered the phone at the office. Uh, before leaving, review with the caregiver how the visit went and confirm the next visit if there is one. And again, with any of this, let me know if you have any questions. I know we're doing this online, so um, feel free to email me back when you send those answers to the questions in the first couple of slides that were highlighted in yellow. Um, thank you all for doing this. I appreciate, again, your flexibility um, to do this online. And if you can um, get those questions answered and back to me, that would be great. And I can get that checked off in your file that you have attended the annual training for our volunteer program. Um, I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thanks.